All right, today I'm going to go over um, how to capture geometries from Google Earth. Uh, included um, with this is a zip file that has um, these three um, files within it. And uh, there is a PDF document here that uh, goes over um, how to install uh, the, the software um, and where to place the plugin file. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. And then you have to make sure your Google Earth is running in uh, the direct X mode. Um, and it, you know, it kind of walks you through, uh, you know, opening it up in the program, et cetera, which I'm going to do right now as well. Uh, so again, um, that'll walk you through getting that set up and going. And this is only something that works in Max 2011. So you have to have 3ds Max uh, 2011 installed on your machine. It's not going to work with uh, 2012 or any other versions. So with that said and done, um, when I go to open this up here, I need to make sure that I have uh, Google Earth selected as my um, program. So if I go to Google and I go to Google Earth and the client, I want to make sure it's the Google Earth EXE, hit open, uh, and I just want to make sure that it's the same thing here, and F12 is going to be my capture key, so I'm going to go ahead and hit launch, and it might take a, a minute for Google Earth to pop up here, um, I've noticed that sometimes I, I, I even have to kind of do it again, um, go through that whole launching um, sequence when I open the, the Ripper program and then hit launch, launch program again. Um, but if you're patient, it should pop up here um, relatively soon. So I'll just wait here another minute. See it popped up. Um, I'll type in Chicago, Illinois and enter. And I'll leave my 3D buildings on and photorealistic. I'm just going to turn off trees. And I'm going to turn off the location. What I'll do is I'll just zoom in to the downtown area here. Uh, maybe my site is over here in uh, Streeterville. So just kind of zoom into this area. And of course, if I zoom out uh, even further, you know, whatever my geometry is looking like on my screen is how it's going to look um, when I go to capture this stuff. So the further I zoom out, the worse it's going to be. So if I want something fairly detailed, I have to be kind of close into here. And there's a couple of settings in Google Earth that you can play around with um, in, in terms of refining what's being displayed um, through your graphics card. But let's say I'm happy with this. Everything's kind of loaded. Um, if I hit F12 on my keyboard, uh, it when it, when it starts to capture, it'll say uh, capturing up here um, instead of ready to capture. And sometimes I've noticed that I actually kind of have to just kind of pan around a little bit and just keep hitting F12. And then, and you can see as soon as it starts to capture, it says it's capturing the frame. So you may have to just kind of like nudge it a little bit up and down, left and right, in order to get it to start capturing. Um, but then when it does start capturing, it'll tell you that it's capturing the frame. And depending on how much is visible, again, if you have a lot of geometry, a lot of stuff visible on your screen, um, then it's going to take a while for it to capture but you know this example here i don't have too much going on i just have a little bit of stuff so then if i get this out of the way go to my 3ds max um, after i have everything set up the way it should be and i go to import i should be able to go to my um, documents here computer c drive and we'll go to um, where it saves, which is under, I think it's actually under my documents, and it's under the Ripper frames, and we're looking at the one that I just created here. So I'm going to go ahead and click open. Um, again, all these values come from that PDF uh, if you kind of follow along um, with what you need to do, and I'll click OK here, let it do its thing. And it might take a, a few minutes to get this in here, um, just depending on how much geometry you have visible um, in your in your scene and what's going on with it. Once
once it does come in, the Google Earth interface is over here to the side. You just want to delete that out. And then very, very small in the center of your screen, if you just kind of do a select all, group your stuff together. I found that the uh, scaling for it should be, if I go to my scale and I think actually I have to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull this over here. I found that um, for the scaling of this object, uh, which I should be by world. And well, I don't understand why. I should have a value that is. Oh, here we go. I got to switch this over. All right. So then for my offset world. I do um, 100,000 and then again 100,000 and then 25680. And I found that for whatever reason that seems to be the um, appropriate scaling factor of it. And then if I go to my rotate, I just rotate uh, minus 90 in the x direction. And then of course, if I hit F3 to display my textures, you can see I now have imported that site um, from Google Earth with all the textures associated with it, um, in, including the ground plane, including the topography. So you can see if I do this for you know the whole city, it would take quite a while to do, but just for this little chunk, it, it works fairly well, fairly quickly. And I now have my site with all the context uh, there and visible and I can start um, plugging in my my models and, and do whatever with it and if you know if I needed to come in here and clean this up I, I see there's a couple of uh, stragglers over here to the side I can you know select these guys um, over here and I gotta actually ungroup it since I had it grouped what I can do is I can select these guys over here and just delete them out of my model so that they're not there anymore and you also noticed um, or may have noticed if you go into scaling this that your your scale is going to be way off I believe you can do reset X form reset selected and then if I come into my scaling now you see everything's been reset back down to a hundred for the local value um, so then once you get it to the proper scale which which like I said I, it seems to be um, you have to go through that that process of scaling it um, that I've discovered and then it, it should be relatively close um, if I actually come in here let's just check this real quick so we'll look at for example something that we can easily measure and we'll just grab a box and drag it across here so that's telling me that it is 105 105 feet across that opening. If I go back to my Google Earth, I come over to this opening. And I'm just gonna measure across it. Hopefully it will be about 105 feet. So you can see I'm pretty much right on the money um, in terms of this the scale of these things. I, I might be off by a few feet here or there, but you know, um, giving the the preciseness of it, I would say I'm pretty close to um, what the proper scale should be. And it seems, like I said, it seems to be pretty consistent in terms of scaling it. So if you kind of follow those numbers uh, when you go to scale this stuff, you should have something that, um, you know, is is pretty accurate in terms of the scaling and the size of it. Um, and you can then start to work with it and plug stuff in and, um, you know, have your context just kind of built for you. Um, so that's it for today. Um, you know, if I wanted to uh, uh, make any manipulations to this uh, model, I, I still have all those options. Um, but it's basically just showing you kind of how to grab that stuff quickly from Google Earth.